Hello and welcome to the DSP Project, your weekly fix of music production and technology. I'm your host Rupert Brown and this week I am reviewing this, the uh, TC Electronic Impact Twin. It is a Firewire audio interface and it is um, quite a nice little unit indeed. Um, as you can see the, uh, the case here is made from plastic. I think you can always get a good feel for it by how it sounds. Um, it's made of plastic, it's kind of ribbed for your pleasure as it were. Um, the plastic is, uh, I have to say, it's, it seems really susceptible to, um, to fingerprints. I've just tried to clean it up so it doesn't look quite as scabby but you can still see them there. Uh, but I guess it's probably not designed to be uh, fondled quite as much as I've fondled this one. Um, I do like the, uh, the surround around the edge here means that you, if you uh, sort of press it up, if it gets pressed up hard against something, that the, the knobs are protected. It's kind of um, curved in here and so you, you sort of can easily get uh, access to the controls. Um, but at the same here again at the back, you've got kind of a lip around the edge. So if you were to put it into the bottom of like a, a case or a backpack or something, then the, uh, hopefully the RCAs or whatever wouldn't get knocked. So um, quite good from that point of view. Feels really, really solid. Quite a, quite a rugged, even though it's plastic, quite a rugged device. Yeah, nice attention to detail. There's a few little things I like. For instance, the, uh, the, the input trims and the, the main sort of monitor control volume knob here is, uh, they're oval as opposed to round. And what that means is when you put your, your fingers on them, you can instantly feel where they are. Um, so without having to physically look at the panel, you can sort of reach down or just have your hand on it. As soon as you touch it, the oval gives you the kind of the information of where the, um, where the pot's pointing. So that's just a, a, nice little, um, a nice little touch that somebody's obviously uh, stopped and thought about. So let's take a closer look at the ins and outs. Okay, on the front panel, first of all, we have a blue LED indicating that the firewire is connected. We have a three segment LED giving us a, a basic idea of what the input's doing. It flashes, uh, you can see red flashing up when it overloads. We have a 20 dB pad if you want to use it as an instrument in input. Gain trim, 48 volt phantom power. So this applies to both inputs one and two. You can't individually swap phantom power. It's either on or off. Um, same, same input again, so you've got a combo jack so you can use uh, both XLR and jack input connections. A line in button which swaps between using the, the two mic inputs on the front or uh, line inputs one and two on the rear. Then this is quite a cool function where it gets interesting here. You've basically got, you can see these th uh, four red LEDs at the top where you can switch between Compressor 1, Compressor 2, the reverb and the, the mix. So I've got it on Compressor 1 at the moment and you can see the little lights jumping up and down here. So I can actually adjust the, um, the amount of compressor that's been affected by the signal and then after a while it jumps back and shows us the gain reduction that's being applied on that channel. So compressor 1 and compressor 2 are for the inputs 1 and 2 and so if I push this little button here I can then come over to reverb, adjust how much reverb I want and then the, the mix, adjust the mix between the internal mixer inside of the impact twin and the firewire, the bus, the audio coming down the firewire bus. Finally we have the, the main output knob which is sort of hardwired to outputs 1 and 2. It would have been nice if I could also patch those over to control 3 and 4 but I'm pretty sure it's a, a preset on 1 and 2. Finally this button here lets us swap between stereo, um, uh, mono and side as in mid and side or sum and difference which you'll find um, on a lot of the TC products that I really like that I don't see other people doing. Um, so you can easily check if you're doing some crazy stereo effects um, squish it down to mono and just make sure that you're not getting any sort of uh, phase cancellation issues. Finally, we have the inputs and we have uh, two inputs, a muting and a non-muting. So obviously if you want to use your, um, use your system at night at home, plug it in to the, the muting input and then it's going to cut the audio from the, the monitors and obviously the non-muting does not cut the audio to the monitors. On the back we have a physical power on off, we have input for the um, power jack, we've got digital input and output over optical that can do both ADAT and TOSLINK, two firewire inputs, full size MIDI in and out ports, SPDIF digital input and output on RCAs, we have four line outputs for jacks and four line inputs for jacks as well. So as you can see, you get quite a lot of ins and outs. You, in fact, you can do up to 14 simultaneous digital and analog um, IOs. It is, um, yeah, it's quite a nice little unit, but it's not just what you see on the surface 
No, it's what's inside that counts, people. So uh, let's take a look at, um, this has got quite a clever little bit of DSP and, and a really nice little piece of software that comes with it. Um, so let's check that out. Touching very quickly on the software, you get a version of Ableton Live Lite, which is obviously a restricted version of Ableton Live, which is, uh, while it does have its limitations, it's enough to at least get you started having a play with it, and then you can decide from there if you like the program and if you need to upgrade to the full version. Uh, it comes with a few plugins. I'll just talk about what the ones I've enjoyed the most would be the, the Res filter, um, which is quite cool. So it's basically a sort of a high pass, low pass filter. So, so I can just grab it here and I can obviously control the Q or the resonance by moving up and down and then the, uh, the, the cut off left and right. We can do low pass filter, high pass filter, we can adjust the slope and have a steep 24 dB slope. And you can do some really sharp cues with this thing as well, like deadly, oh, deadly stuff. Uh, which kind of reminds me of the uh, the System 6000, um, the EQ system, where we get those crazy sharp cues for surgically adjusting things. You've got uh, saturation here, so we can do a drive. Which can get pretty extreme. With the communication section at the bottom, we can actually use one instance of the plugin to control another. We can have it in different channels. I've got it in the same channel for the purpose of this demonstration, but you can sort of have them in uh, anywhere inside of your project. So I've got this um, res filter one selected as the master, res filter two selected as the slave, and I want to control the, the drive, and I want the source, I want this to be the slave, and I want the source to be from the cutoff from res filter one. So what will happen now is if I change the, the cutoff here on res filter 1, you'll see the drive moving up and down on res filter 2. But I actually want the opposite of what it's doing at the moment. So when the, um, the low pass filter comes up, I want to, to flick it around so that as I bring the, the low pass filter down, that it's going to um, add, add more drive to it. So let's have a listen to that. might say that's a bit extreme so we can control the range here so it doesn't use um, the full drive And that's just the start of it. You can link up many different instances for some really complex sort of automated uh, matrix setups, which is quite cool. Um, there is also a reverb that comes with it, as you would expect from TC. It's a really nice sounding reverb. Um, the M40, very straightforward uh, hall room plate. Um, so uh, and just sort of minimal minimal controls, but enough there that you can get quite a few different sounds out of it. Uh, uh, and again, sounds very. Nice uh, assimilator, which is quite an interesting one. It actually, um, you can learn EQ curves. So if I play this here, oh, that's, that's a lot of reverb. Let's turn, turn, turn these guys off. If I play the tune and I've got this select as my reference track, push play and then, look, and then select learn. So it's now learnt that EQ curve, so I can load in a, a, a song and then apply that EQ curve to a different song or a song I'm working on. So I can take a song that I really like, that I really like the sound of, and then try and basically kind of steal that EQ curve and, and try and apply that to my tra track to get it to sound sort of in the similar ballpark. So there's um, similar sort of systems about like this, but I think the Ozone does something similar as well. Um, but quite an interesting concept. To, it's quite quite a fun one to play with, um, and you can use it in like a mastering context for trying to get your whole mix to sound the same, or an individual item. So you might have a, I don't know, a particular guitar sound that you really like, and you can use this to try and get that the same, at least the same EQ, and apply it to uh, to get it sounding a bit more like uh, that sound. 
Here we have the TC near control panel. Starting from the top, we've got system settings for you can set your, your sample rates. We've got the uh, guitar, built-in guitar tune here. You can see my voice is way out of tune. About section, we can update our firmware. The mixer section, quite a nice GUI. I really like how they've laid it out. Um, we've got uh, these first two sections are for inputs one and two. You can see my mic coming in here on input two and the first, this sort of wider bar on the left is the incoming signal and the uh, bar on the right is the outgoing signal. We've got a, a nice EQ section here. We can change the high frequency between a bell and a shelving EQ. Uh, these work as you'd expect. We can select a frequency to EQ, choose to either cut or boost by X amount here, um, and then change the, the bandwidth or the width of the bell um, control here. The, the low frequency can go between a bell and a high pass uh, filter, so that's very useful. We've got some uh, presets here which affect the EQ and the compression as well. Here's the, the, the compression unit. It is one knob, so it's, you don't need to fiddle with any attack or release settings. It's all um, taken care of as part of the kind of presets. You can select a style. You can see here we've got guitar or vocals or what have you. I've got that set to percussion because we'll put some drums through here in a moment. Uh, de for uh, if you have a particularly sibilant voice, you can take care of it with that section there. We have a reverb send and then pretty standard mixer control pan solo mute and volume so let's uh, put a little let's put a few drums through this and see what this uh, compressor sounds like Okay, so as you can hear, obviously you wouldn't wind it right up to the top like I did then, which is obviously going to squish it, but um, if you use it a little bit, it sounds quite nice. Um, uh, as I said, you've got the, these, uh, this part two here is basically a complete mirror of section one there, so you get a set of EQ and compression for each, um, for each input. Then we've got the, um, the analog and digital inputs, which just give us our basic reverb sand, pan balance, what have you. This section here is for ADAT, which I don't currently have enabled. We've got the reverb module. As you'd expect, the reverb sounds really nice, as again you would expect from, from TC, um, being that they make a lot of really nice reverb units. So the, um, the DSP on the reverb is quite good. If you need a little bit of you know, confidence reverb in your monitor, you can do that there. Uh, we've got a master section here, so we've got outputs on Firewire 1 and 2 coming through, and we can mix between this um, our settings here in the mixer section and what's coming out of our DAW. Uh, master volume control, and then on the end we've got a, a nice little patch-based system, quite like, looks a bit like uh, battleships, if you know uh, putting little pins in there. Oh, I should have this mic turned out, it's clipping a bit. I, I was told that there is a limiter built in to the um, to the inputs, but I can't find any mention of it uh, anywhere in the manual, or I can't seem to hear that there's one in there. So I'm not completely sure. I have to get confirmation whether there is or isn't a limiter built in, but I can't seem to find it. That is uh, the software side of things. So I think this unit would lend itself really nicely to live performance. As I said before, you've got the, the physical body is sort of, um, is, even though it's plastic, it does feel very rigid. I think it, it feels like it would survive um, being, taken, being taken on tour. Uh, you've got um, two great mic pre's. You've got the, 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 the great sounding DSP that comes on board and the fact that you can access it all from the, the front panel is really nice as well. So you don't need to play with a laptop. Um, the compressor, having, uh, having a, a good sounding compressor that's um, at the end of one, one dial is, is fantastic. You know, you might not be the most technical person. Maybe you just want to, you know, sing and play guitar, whatever, and you, you don't have that technical background. It's nice that you can instantly get a pretty good sound out of this thing straight away without having to um, worry too much about having to learn all the, all the individual settings. Um, so yeah, definitely good for that, um, for that kind of purpose. But at the same time, you've got enough ins and outs here that that it should be able to fulfill most project studios needs. Uh, you can do ADAT over digital as well, so you could expand that with uh, another eight inputs. Uh, I think ADAT will let you do 48K, um, eight channels of 48K, or I think if you double them up, you should be able to get 96 kilohertz um, sample rate out of uh, uh, four inputs. So um, you've got extra expandability uh, if you need it there as well. Talking about the sound quality, how does it sound? 
pretty damn good actually. It's um, really, I was really impressed. Um, given the price, this thing weighs in at 330 pounds is about the street price for this at the moment. Um, and I think that's exceptionally reasonable. It, it does sound very good. You can do up to uh, 192 sample rate with 64 bit, uh, bit depth. Uh, I don't think you really need anything over 60, um, Oh, sorry, over 96k as far as the, the sample rate's concerned. Uh, I don't think many people can hear any, any better than that. That being said, it's nice to record at those higher, those higher sample rates if you want to start doing sound design stuff like slowing things down. It's nice to have that extra information in there. And, and in that sense, it is, it is useful to have that, that higher sample rate. Um, so yeah, overall I really like it. It's a, it's a great sounding box. I think it's worth the money. I think you get uh, great value in the, the software and stuff that comes bundled with it. And uh, I definitely think it's a go. If, you're, uh, if, if it looks like it meets your needs as far as the ins and outs are concerned, then I don't think you'd be disappointed with this, this box at all. It seems, uh, it seems really good. So that has been my review of the TC Electronic Impact Twin, if you have any questions on this unit, head down to the dspproject.com, leave a message under this video. Um, now, for the exciting part, the giveaway. What are we giving away this week? Well, beginning the competition to give away this week. This bad boy, that's right. Uh, if you would like to win the Impact Twin, you could get one for free. All you have to do is head down to the dspproject.com slash win. And uh, I'm just sorting out the details for the comp exactly what they're gonna be for the competition at the moment. But uh, by the time you watch this video, they will be updated there and you'll find out what you can do. So big thank you to TC Electronic, really cool guys. Um, really really great products like we've done a couple they've sent me a few bits now and every uh, every bit is just i like their stuff more and more it really is um it is cool and being able to do like the the mono inside and stuff from the front panel get out of here who else is doing that um really really nice stuff well thought out um and just uh, just a good good attention to detail right through so again if you want to win it head down to the dspproject.com slash win and this this very unit with my fingerprints on it could be yours um, that is that is all for this week if you want to uh, if you want to send me an email you can email me at inbox at the dspproject.com don't forget we've also got our boxy app that has just come so if you use boxy search for the dsp project it's all right you can come in <laughs> you can search for the, uh, the for the DSP project um, in your Boxy app, and that is it for this week. I will see you next week.